Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the, to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, what we will do is a continuation of what we did yesterday, which was a topic of weighted average. And the problem that we're going to do today is not the same problem as what you see on page 122, problem number 3, which is what we did yesterday on, on day number 384. Today we're going to do problem on the same topic, but a little bit different one. Instead of twice as many, we have twice as many people. We'll read that in a second. So turn to page 122, question number 3. And if you have not watched yesterday's video, day number 384, make sure you watch that video first. So here, here's how it goes. It says that we have a firm, and we are told that in a firm, in a firm, the salary of college graduate is $25,000. Salary of college graduate, $25,000. Furthermore, we have Rather, we are told that the average salary, AVE is for the average, average salary of college graduates is $25,000. Anybody who has a college degree in that firm, there, if you look at them as one group and the people who do not have college degree, the employees of that firm who do not have college degrees, the non-graduates, their average salary, we are told, is $15,000. We are further told that there are more than twice as many non-graduates as graduates working in the firm. There are more than three times as many people who do not have college degrees, people who are working for those firms, out of the employees of that firm. Question simply is, which of the following, given all these facts, which of the following could be the overall average for the firm? He says, pick one or more. There's this possibility that more than one answer choice might be correct. Here are the answer choices all the way from 14 to 26, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and 26. What does thrice mean? Thrice means three times as many, twice and then thrice. Thrice, we, learnt, we learned about thrice in our vocabulary videos, in our vocabulary videos on door number six, day number 63. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, watch that video, day number 63, just type in vocabulary, GRE vocabulary words, just type in GRE vocabulary words, day 63, it will pop right up. Let's begin, let's get going, enough of the talk. What can we do here? Well, first thing first, what we have to understand is, which is what we talked about yesterday, what we have to understand is that when we have a group of people, one group of people, another group of people, the average, whatever the average is as one group, and whatever the average is of another group, when you combine the two groups together, or three groups, or five groups, the overall average can never ever, when you combine these two groups together, because that's what he's asking, he says which of the following could be the overall average for the firm, when you combine the non-graduates to graduates. The overall average can never ever be more than the highest average that we have for a given group, if we have more than two groups, three groups, four groups, eight groups, the Whatever the average average was for one of those groups, which was the highest one, the average cannot go above that. Overall average will never be above that. Similarly, the overall average, the overall average cannot cannot ever be lower than the lowest average. It can never be higher than the highest average of a, of all the groups. It can never ever be lower than the lowest average. Which means that since the average for this group is twenty five thousand, the average for this group is fifteen thousand. Overall average, it is impossible for overall average to be below 15. This is nonsensical. It cannot be 14. Similarly, overall average cannot be 20, 20, 20, more than 25. It cannot even be 25. Geez, it's, not, it's nonsensical. One more, next step, step number two. If we had the same number of groups, the same number of people, if we had, say, if we had graduates and non graduates, let's call them, we're going to use the letter. For college graduates, for the college graduates, you're going to use the letter G, and for non-graduates, you're going to use the letter N. So that's, that's what this is, G and N. If we had the same number of people, listen very carefully, if we had the same number of people, let's say 10 graduates and 10 non-graduates, and since their average is 25 and this their average is, is, is 15, if we had the same number of people, if we had the same number of people, then the overall average simply would have been the average of the two numbers. The average would have been 20. Between 25, and, between 25 and 15, the number that falls exactly between 25 and 15 is 20. That's the case if we had the same number of graduates as non-graduates. Let's, let's keep listening, okay? But because of the fact that we have more non-graduates, there are more than twice as many. Not twice as many, but more than twice as many. In other words, 
if we if we have ten of these people, uh, uh, if we have ten graduates, if we have ten graduates, if we have ten graduates, we have to have minimum of thirty-one non-graduates because thirty thirty would have been exactly thrice as many. It says there are more than thrice as many. So if we have ten of these. If there are 10 people with a college degree, there has to be a minimum, at least minimum, of 31 people who do not have college degrees. Because there are more of these people whose average is low, they're going to pull the average down. One more time, the average of the graduates and non-graduates would have been the midpoint of the two, two numbers, 25 and 15, if they had the same number of people in the both groups. In which case, it would have been exactly 20. But because there are more people with a lower salary, non-graduates that is, they're going to pull the average down. They're going to pull the average down. What does it tell us? So what we just established, what we just established is that overall average in this scenario cannot be 20 or above 20 because they're pulling the average down. It, the overall average, because there are 31 of them, now we have to take the weighted average. Now we have to take the weighted average. It's going to be 10 times this and 31 times this and divided by not 2, but 10 plus 31, 10 plus 31. This figure divided by 30, 41, if you do it out, you will see that this figure is going to be less than 20,000 because they're pulling the average down. That tells us the overall average in this scenario cannot be 20 or anything above that. Which means now we can rule out, and I'm going to use different color because we are ruling it out for a different reason. This was a different logic. This, this is a different logic here. It cannot be 20 or above it. It cannot be 20 or anything above it. These two are the possibilities. These two are the possibilities. Now we move on to third steps, and the third step is going to be a little bit more sophisticated to ascertain which one of these two is possible, or perhaps both they are both possible. Perhaps it is possible for overall average to be 16, and perhaps it is also possible for overall average in this form to be 18. For that, we have to do a little bit more work, a little bit more sophisticated work. So let's begin. So what we're going to do now is that the problem clearly tells us, problem clearly tells us that there are there are more than thrice as many. There are more than thrice as many. But to start out with, we'll take a simple scenario and we'll assume that there are exactly three times as many. We'll assume that there are exactly three times as many. One graduate and three non-graduates. Even though it clearly says that there are more than three. In other words, we want to establish the limit. Let's see what we can find out. Let's see what we can find out. So we're going to have one times 25 because there is only one of this person and 15 times three because there are three of those people. And we're going to divide that by the weights, which is 1 plus 3. Watch what happens, okay? If you do that, watch what happens. So we're going to get, let's put a parenthesis around it. So we're going to get 25 plus 45, that is 15 times 3, over 4. 25 plus 45, 25 plus 25 is 50, 50 plus another 20 is 70. So we get 70 over 4. Let's make sure I did it correctly. That's right. 20 plus 40 is 60 and there's another 10 is 70. 70 divided by 4. Let's see what we can find out, shall we? How many 4s does 7 have? 7 has only one 4. 7 has only one 4. After we take away the 4 from the 7, we have a remainder of 3. We have a remainder of 3. What happens to that 3? That 3 goes and joins the 0. That 3 goes and joins the 0 and becomes 30. And how many 4 does 30 have? 30 has 7 8s are 24. It has. Why am I counting but 7 8s? 7 8s are not 24. What time am I saying? 7 4s are 24. 7 4s are 28. 7 4s are 24, 28. So it has 7 4s. 7 4s are 28. 7 4s. 7 4s are 28. We had a 30 here. Remember, we had a 30 here. We had used a 4 from here. We had a remainder of 3. The 3 went and joined this 0, became 30. And now we just established that 30 has 7 4. 7 4s are 28. After we take away 28 from the 30, we have a remainder of 2. That remainder of 2 must be divided by the 4. Answer is 17 and a half. 17 and a half. What this tells us is that, what this tells us is that, if we did in fact have if we did in fact have exactly thrice as many non-graduates in this firm as the number of graduates working in this firm, in that case, in that, and given the fact that graduates earn $25,000 on average and non-graduates earn $15,000 on average, in that case, in that scenario, 
the overall average for the firm would have been exactly seventeen and a half thousand dollars. Would have been exactly seventeen and a half thousand dollars. One more time, this is this is this would have been the average. This would have been the average seventeen and a half thousand dollars would have been the overall average if we had in fact exactly three times as many non-graduates as graduates. But we have more than three times as many non-graduates. We have more than three times as many non-graduates. And remember, non-graduates earn lower salary. They are putting the average down, which means overall average cannot be more than 17 and a half. It cannot even be 17 and a half. Overall average, whatever it is, whatever the overall average is, is less than 17 and a half. It is allowed to be less than 17 and a half, but it cannot be equal to 17 and a half, nor can it be more than 17 and a half. It rules out 18. Out of all the answer choices that are given to us, the correct answer choice is only B. Correct answer choice is only B. That's it, we're done with the problem. The next thing we're going to do, next thing we're going to do is just for learning purposes, we're going to find out, we're going to find out precisely what the ratio has to be of the non-graduates to graduates in order for overall average to be $16,000 exactly. So that's what we're claiming. We're claiming, we're claiming that in this firm it is possible, it is possible that the overall average salary is $16,000. The question is under what scenario, under what conditions, what would have to be the precise ratio. Let's write it down. What would have to be? Let's write it down on the top before I forget it. What would have to be the precise ratio of non-graduates to graduates? Because there are more of non-graduates, so we're going to put that in numerator. Otherwise, we could end up with fraction. What would have to be the precise ratio of non-graduates to graduates in order, in order, for the overall average to be $16,000. How would we do that? How would we do that? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find We need the room, obviously. We're going to raise all of this thing now. Oh, what we're going to do is, we're going to define our unknown, our unknown here, that whatever unknown we are solving for, it's always a good idea to define the unknown that you're working for. The unknown here is the ratio, because that's what you're looking for. What would have to be the precise ratio, ratio of non-graduates to graduates? Let's give it a name. Let, let W, let W be the ratio. D ratio, D meaning the ratio of non-graduates to graduates. In other words, for every one graduate, we have N for every one graduate. For example, for example, if after we do all the work, after we do all the work, if it turns out the value of W happens to be 3 to 7, if it turns out the value of W happens to be 3 to 7, what it says is that for every three non-graduates, remember we're putting non-graduates on the top, for every three non-graduates, we have seven graduates, which we know is not possible in this problem because there are thrice as many non-graduates. Is it possible 13 to 7? No, 13 to 7 is still not possible because that's not even twice as many. Is it possible? Is it possible 23 to 7? Ah, that is possible. That is possible. Because 7 times 3 is 21. Now we have more than thrice as many non-graduates as graduates. We have to find we want to find that ratio, shall we? Let's do that then. So let W be the ratio. So W here is the ratio of non-graduates to graduates. And this is how it looks like. So we're gonna have Non-graduates are earning $15,000, non-graduates are earning $15,000, and, and the weights that we are assigning to them is W, and graduates are earning $25,000, and the weights that we are assigning to them is 1. In other words, for every 1 graduate, we have N over W non-graduates. Do you understand? This is the part you have to understand. For every 1 graduate, for example, for example, if it turns out, if it turns out that W is W is say, uh, I'm just making it up, 25 over 7, 
Well, for every one graduate, we're going to have this many non-graduates. As you can see, this quantity is more than three. So if we have one graduate in the firm, if we have one person with college degree, we need to have this many non-college non degrees. And instead of one, if we have seven of those, then we need to have, then we need to have 25, 25 non-graduates. This is the ratio of non-graduates to graduates. So if that happens, if G happens to be seven, we multiply this thing by seven. And what he said is that if we have seven non-graduates, we'll have 25. If we have seven graduates, rather, we'll have 25 non-graduates. Let's find out, shall we? That's it. And that overall ratio, we want to find out what that overall ratio has to be in order for the average to be 16. It's very simple. I'm going to pick up speed now. Oh, this is not how we want to set up. So this is the number of people we have. We have W non-graduates and we have one graduate person and the overall average has to be 16. This is the equation we need to solve for W. As you can see, it's a very simple equation. Multiply both sides by W plus 1 and you're going to end up with 15W plus 25 equals 16W plus 16. Bring a 15W here and you're going to get W equals 2, 25 minus 16. There you go. Oh, there you go. Ratio has to be 1 to 9, or rather 9 to 1 in our case, because we are defining W as, because we define the W as the ratio of non-graduates to graduates, not graduates to non-graduates. So the ratio has to be 9 to 1. There has to be 9 non-graduates in this firm, making an average salary of $15,000 for every person with a graduate degree, whose average salary has to be 25, happens to be 25000 the answer is 9. 9 is the magic ratio. How can we verify it? How can we verify it? Is it possible to verify this answer? Of course it's possible to verify the answer. We can verify the answer right here. We, we have 15, uh, 15 is the average salary of the non-graduates. We are saying that we need 9 of those. We are saying that we need, we need 9 of these people. We need 9 of these people for every one of these. Every one of graduates. So. We have 15 times 9 divided by uh, plus, plus 25 times 1 divided by 9 plus 1. And when we do this work, it better be exactly 16. We better be exactly 16. Let's find out if it's 16 or not, shall we? Let's find out. So 15 times 9, how much is 15 times 9? How the hell do I know? I know 15 times 10. I know 10 15s are 150. Of course, you know it too. 10 15s are 150. We don't need 1015, we need 915. So we'll take away 115 from 150. 150 minus 15 is 135. So this quantity is 135. Let's put it here. So this one is 15 times W happens to be 135. And 25 times 1 is just 25. And see what we get. 135. Well, 125. 125 plus 25 would have been 150. So it's going to be 160. And what do you know? What do you know? It turns out that this quantity is in fact equals to 16. As you can see, it works out. Now, what I want you to do now, what I want you to do now, after I tell you how, after I set it up, what I want you to do now is to pause the video, pause the video, and do the rest of the work yourself that I'm going to give you just now. These are the answer choices. As you can see, they are all even numbers. They go from 14, 16, 18. So what we, what we established a little while ago is that it is possible for all our average to be anything less than seventeen and a half thousand dollars if you recall and we just showed we just showed what the precise ratio has to be in order for it to be sixteen thousand dollars do the work yourself and find out what what has to be find out what has to be the precise ratio of non-graduates to graduate in order for the overall average to be not sixteen thousand but rather seventeen thousand Do the work yourself. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay. okay here we go. Again, we're going to define our unknown in the same manner as before. So the average salary of non-graduates is fifteen thousand. We're going to have W of those for every one graduate. Average salary of who? Whose is one thousand? Uh, rather 25,000 and we have one of those for every for every one for every one graduate for every one graduate we have w non graduates so we have all together w plus one people 
and overall average we want it to be not 16,000 but this time 17,000. Let's, let's find out shall we? So 15W plus 25 has to equal 17W plus 17. It's same as before of course it's no, no big deal. Bring the 15W over there you get 2W equals and bring the 17 over there. 25 minus 17 is how much is 25 minus 17? It will be 3 plus 5, 8. can be 8, can it? I hope I don't make a mistake. 20, yes, it is 8. Oh, W has to be 4. W has to be 4. I, I hope I didn't mark it up. 25 minus 20 would have been exactly 5. And another 3, it is 8. Let's verify, shall we? Let's verify it. We work and we verify. Let's verify right here. So we are saying that the ratio has to be 4 to 1. We are saying that ratio needs of non-graduates to graduate needs to be 4 to 1 in order for the overall average to be $17,000. Let's verify it. So we have 15,000 is the average salary. We have four of the non-graduates, one of the graduates whose average salary is 25,000. There is only one of them. And that's 4 plus 1. This quantity, 4, 15 times 4 is 60. 15 times 4 is 60, 60 plus 20 is 85, 85 divided by 5. This quantity is 85 divided by 5, 85 divided by 5, and that has to be $17,000, which of course it does, which of course it would do. 60 plus 25, 85 divided by 5 is not what I'm looking for, is it? Yes, it is. I'll show you why it is in a second. It, yes, it is. It is It is what we're looking for. Instead of dividing, oh, we can actually do it out actually. How many 5 does 8 have? 8 has 1 5. After we take away 5 from the 8, after we take away the 5 from the 8, we have a remainder of 3. 3 goes to join the 5, becomes 35, and 35 has 7 5. There we go. Or, what we could have done here, 85 divided by 5 is what we wanted. Another thing we could have done is multiply top and bottom by 2. If you multiply top and bottom by 2, how much is 85 times 2? Well, I know 80 times 2 is 160. 80 times 2 is 160. Therefore, 85 times 2 must be 170. So what we end up here is 170 over 10. 170 over 10, of course, is 17,000. As you can see, our roll average is indeed $17,000 for this firm. If the ratio has to be 4 to 1, if we have 4 non-graduates for every 1 graduate, and non-graduate making an average salary of $15,000, and graduate people with a graduate degree, uh, college, gra college graduates having an average salary of $25,000, then in that scenario, as long as the ratio is 4 to 1, the overall, overall salary, uh, overall average will be precisely $17,000, which is not one of the answer choices here, but that is possible. Anything under 17 and a half is possible. It has to be under 17 and a half and it must be above 15 because 15 was the average of one group, the lower group. So anything that you find between 15 and 17 and a half is a fair game. 16 works and so does 17. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.